what we're doing here is we're, we're wetting or casing the leather. Um, vegetable tan leather has to be wetted before it'll accept any kind of tool mark in it. You have to let that moisture kind of soak into the to the leather. You can kind of feel as you're touching it with your hand what it will get to as far as when it's ready to be worked. making today is cuff for a rifle. This goes on the back of the butt stuff. Fix this here real quick. Showing up backwards on your screen. I apologize. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer that design onto the leather. This leaf right here.
the veins in that. here and get this other rose. Just kind of gives you a general layout of where your cuts are going to be.
Okay. That, that side's transferred. Start on the side with the rows with the name on it. Pencil this part in, then the rest of this guy comes around like that. There we go. Let's see. Get the R in there. got the letter.
Okay. A rose and some leaves, and then we can start working on it with a swivel knife. Keep my head out of the picture so you can see what I'm doing. Hey, Roy, how you doing, bud? No, this wasn't a freehand. This was actually what I did is I designed it on Inkscape is a uh, it's kind of like adobe but um it's free <laughs> and so uh this is actually uh for my wife's uh cowboy action rifle and her alias is naomi rose uh naomi was my grandma's name and rose was her grandma's name so she put them together here I think, we, I think we just about got her transferred there. I think we got her there. You can see that on there, but it's now transferred onto the leather. This will actually, this is the stock off of her Marlin. This will actually lay back here. And then wrap around to the other side as well. We're going to give her another wedding. Oh, we forgot a leaf. Well. I never tooled a piece of leather where I haven't forgot to trace something on there. So I guess we'll just freehand the leaf on there. Something like that.
Okay. Give that just a couple of couple of minutes to soak in there. My wing dividers adjusted down here. Yeah, Roy, I'm actually on Wi-Fi up in my studio, workshop, whatever you want to call it. Um, and our internet is not the best here, so I hope that it doesn't cut out too bad on you, bud. So we're going to set this for an eighth of an inch. So we're going to put an eighth of an inch stitch line in here. that that'll be for when we put the lining on it and sew it all up together Is like to test my swivel knife before I go crazy cutting on the actual leather to make sure I'm getting a good, good, nice, nice, clean cut on it. So, Roy, what have you been up to? Actually, put it on my face to feel if it's cool enough. When it's ready, it'll be nice and cool. For cutting, I think we're at a right place. We're not quite ready to tool it, but we can definitely get in there with our swivel knife. So I think we're going to start on this side with the roses over here. You always want to cut from closest to farthest. So we're going to start. We're going to start with this rose right here. In my workspace here. Okay, here we go.
luckily over here our shutdown hasn't been terrible we've been pretty darn lucky as far as how far everything shut down here in nebraska but luckily we didn't have a, a complete shutdown like a lot of places did Well, we've been doing all right. I mean, uh, the shop stayed relatively busy the whole time. And, um, you know, I think we're all ready to get back to get back to normal. Um, I'll tell you that. But um, the uh, the boys didn't have the last nine weeks of their their school year, so they were kind of bummed about that, which I don't blame them. You know, my oldest is a an eighth grader. He'll be going into freshman, so he was kind of disappointed he didn't get to finish up his eighth grade year at the middle school. Granted, the middle school and high school are right next to each other in our little town, so he's been going to the the high school for classes for the last three years, but something about getting to finish out in in his uh, in his school, he was a little disappointed about. Then my uh, then my old or my youngest will be a uh, a sixth grader, so he'll be going to middle school for the first time, and so he he was kind of disappointed he didn't get to finish out in the elementary school with his class so but i think that's kind of the story everywhere around you know it's definitely a a different situation compared to where we've been in the past on a lot of this stuff That rose is done. Yeah, it's kind of nice living in the rural areas that, you know, we're not as uh, impacted by it, I suppose, as, as a lot of places are. Um, we've got, I think on our community, we've got 52 cases, last I heard. And then um, we did have eight deaths here, but they were all in the the nursing home here in town. We didn't, we didn't have anybody outside of the nursing home that got sick or any that well, excuse me. They, we had people outside the nursing home who got sick, but we didn't have any deaths or anything like that.
tough thing with roses is there's so many layers on them. And there's a lot of curves to a rose. I think the only thing that's more difficult to do than roses are pine cones. I made a planner for my wife years ago, and it was pine cones. And after that, I think I carved 45 pine cones onto a planner for her. And after that, I said I would never do pine cones again. And so far, I've stayed true to my word. Well, that's good. I'm glad that there was some kids who still got to go to school. Got our roses. I am working on um, a little bit of Watch City Cigar Company Rhythm and Blues. It's a uh, it's a Virginia Perique. Um, I do have one tin of that Red Flake with Perique, but I've been kind of holding on to it. C and D blends don't always agree with me real well, so I've been kind of apprehensive about breaking into it too deeply. I've been smoking a lot of the, the Sam Galleth blends. Um, now that McClellan's is kind of, is out of the picture. Uh, Sam Galleth has kind of become my, my regular stuff other than some of the, the small, um, the small blenders like watch city cigar, um, the country squire, the Ken Byron ventures. Uh, those are all good blends too. Bad thing with this is you get to uh, get to cutting and then you forget about your pipe. It goes out and then you got to get it going again. It's kind of tough to to do with a pipe in your mouth. But a lot like pipe smoking, this is kind of one of those things that you just have to slow down while you're doing it and take your time and enjoy what you're doing. What do you think about that uh, um, Carolina red flag, Roy?
got a little wild with that one. We can fix that one. We can fix her there. Like Bob, Bob Ross always says, there's no mistakes, only happy accidents. first got started doing this I used to get so mad at myself or I thought I screwed up or didn't do just what I thought should be done on it then I got to the point where I figured out you know it's going to be stressful doing this it's not worth doing it and ever since then it's gotten a lot fun more fun Yeah, there's some there's some concentration that goes into it. You kind of lose yourself, actually. You get to going, and next thing you know, two or three hours have passed, and you don't even realize it. Drop on there. Stem coming out of here. Lifting my knife if I can avoid it. It's tough to do without lifting my knife. That side's done. Yeah, I don't know if uh, some of those small blunders are going to be able to weather the storm that's coming. Um, you know, you look at the rules and regulations that are being pushed down on them and forced on them, I guess I should say. And, and you look like in Massachusetts, uh, 
you know, they're they're making it where anything that's got a topping um, is, or yeah, anything that's got a, an added topping is outlawed. I wonder on that um, that Carolina Red Flake if the uh, if a few years of age would help improve the the sweetness on those Virginias or not. I know that I've got some some older Virginias that I have in the cellar and uh, you know there's a there's a pretty pretty remarkable amount of difference even even when you uh, you know just put even six months worth of age on a Virginia it seems like it just gets that much sweeter that much quicker. We got to try and clean up our in a little bit. I got a little bit off on that. I don't know if you can see the tail is a little bit off there, so we got to fix that. All right, let's see if we can fix this guy here. Yeah, the, the Lakeland blends aren't bad. I think the first time I tried them, I tried some Bob's Chocolate Flake. And I'd, I'd only been into pipe smoking for maybe six months or a year at that point in time, and I thought it was just disgusting, like smoking a bar of soap. But uh, the more I've, I guess my palate has developed a little bit more, the more I kind of enjoyed enjoyed those Lakeland blends a little bit more as time has gone on.
No, this is just a just a hobby, Roy. Just a hobby. Hey, Paul. How are things uh, across the across the pond, my friend? Thanks, Paul. It is a, uh, a rifle cuff for my wife's uh, cowboy action rifle. I was showing kind of Roy earlier. This is the, the butt stock for it. This side will sit on there and it'll wrap around. And that side, whoop, 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 there we go. I got it figured out one of these days. That side will wrap around on there. Oh, I don't think we're doing too bad over here for the most part. piece of leather is probably from from your neck of the woods this is a this is actually imported English leather leather I like to use the imported leather more than the domestic because in England you guys don't use barbed wire fences that we do here and the cattle here have a tendency of going up to a barbed wire fence and rubbing on it and uh, getting, we call them range marks is what they are, is what we call them. But basically, you know, scratches in the hide and stuff like that. Because you can have a, a nice looking piece of leather and then have a big scratch in the middle of it and it kind of runs the whole thing.
Oh, is it banned, really? Oh, really? I hadn't heard about that. So he actually broke the lockdown rules and went to his family house, huh? Well, I guess that's one set of rules for them and one set of rules for you, I guess, it sounds like to me. Yeah, we, uh, I guess back to the, the barbed wire topic, I think just about everywhere here uses barbed wire. Um, now, if I'm just making something utilitarian, I don't mind using the domestic leather, but because I can... I can deal with some character on it like that, but for something like this or a handbag or a nice wallet, I want a, a nice, nice unmarred piece of leather to work with. The downside is it comes at a quite a premium price for that. A, a side is oh goodness. I think I'd rather have to deal with some three strand barbed wire than broken glass on top of a wall. Oh, I'm going to cut this ass. That's kind of a pain in the rear. Yeah, it definitely stops people from climbing over, I'm sure. Enjoyed your uh, chat with um, uh, Mike Canerod Piper a couple of weeks ago. Roy, did you get a chance to log on and watch uh, any of Mike's stuff? <laughs> well, Paul, you did great. Don't worry about it, bud. All right.
probably getting pretty late over there, isn't it, Paul? What? One or two o'clock in the morning? One thirty. Roy, are you in are you in central time or are you in eastern time where you're at in Ohio? Twelve thirty, so six hours ahead of me here. For you guys, it's probably like watching paint dry as I do this, I'm guessing. Roy, haven't been watching much YTPC. I had started to uh, go back and watch some of John's stuff, matches, but I just I couldn't do it very long, you know. For a guy who. I never met in person and only had a few email conversations with. Losing him just was uh, well, kind of a blow. Kind of a blow. You're in Eastern time, Roy?
getting there slowly but surely. One more rows to do. Yeah, you know, um, I figured I'd been a, uh, a country squire listener long enough that, you know, it was, it was time to become a, a supporter for him. So, and uh, good old Bo did not disappoint with butchering my last name by any means. I figured I don't really spend money on basically anything else, so I might as well give them five bucks an episode, and, you know. It helps helps them out and helps us out. And Have you guys heard of the the virtual pipe club uh, group that's on Facebook now? Yeah, um, I watched that video that um, John's daughter, I believe her name is Katie, put up. Um, it was good to good to hear from her. Yeah, and uh, Mutton Chop Chris, you know, I really enjoyed his podcast too, and. And uh, or his uh, YouTube videos, I should say. I apologize, but um, I'm not sure. I know he had said at one point in time that his uh, his job was getting to be a little bit more. He's getting to have to do a little bit more in his job than he was doing before, and so uh, he was going to take a break from videos for a while. But that was that was quite a while ago. Uh, that he did that, you know, probably going on, well, I don't know, maybe six months to a year. Oops. Put tape on the back of this so that way the, as I'm tooling it, the, the leather doesn't stretch. Okay, Paul, no problem, bud. Okay. 
Okay. Let that dry for a couple minutes here. And maybe I can finish this bowl here. There's not much left in it. I think we're going to go ahead and knock that one out. Load up with something else here. I think we'll go. Oh, sure, Roy. Nothing wrong with that, bud. Nothing wrong with that. I think we're going to go with the old bull run for this next bull. It's a uh, for Gator Black blend. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it's really similar to BCA. It's kind of that, uh, got that honey topping on it like BCA does. Pretty, I don't know, good for a, a sweet blend to have. I think we can salvage it. That end's a little funky, but I think I can work it out to make it look good. Zoom in a little bit on that. That's a bevel lifter. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bevel all the edges. Several, several bevelers, big ones and little ones, and coarse ones and fine ones. Well, I tell you, Roy, it's one of those things where you can get as involved or as as deeply involved or as lightly involved as you want it. Um, I started doing it about 
seven or eight years ago. No, probably longer than that. Probably nine, nine, almost ten years ago, I guess now. And um, I went and took a uh, an introductory class, a free introductory class at Tandy Leather, where I lived in Omaha, and um, it was. I want to say it was six weeks that we took that class, six weeks on Saturdays, and uh, you just had to buy their their basic starter kit. I think it was, at the time, I think it was 50 bucks or something like that. We took some coasters, and then um, what else did we do? We did some coasters, and then we wound up um, making a real simple wallet. And I think that was about it for that class. They just kind of taught you the basics. And then I took a class after that that was a wallet making class, and we made wallets in that. And then I made a, I took a, um, a case class that they had where they taught you how to make, oh, nice sheaths and, and uh, different things like that. Hmm. That pre those Pretty blends are good blends. They're just good blends all the way around. What I'm doing here is I'm waiting for it to get us back to its natural color. That means that moisture sunk in about halfway into the leather. Take and mix up water, about a cup of water and a teaspoon of, of um, Lexol. I think the next, um, I think the next tobacco order I put in is going to be from Peretti's. Um, they've got some really good vapors, but like you said, you have to be careful if you push them hard they'll bite you if you get a chance try some uh 558 flake um or some old dominion flake from uh watch city cigar company they're both really good they're a crumble plate cake but uh good vapors Well, thank you, sir. Grab something I'll show you here.
here's uh, one I was just messing around with. Did some oak leaves on it. Get that frame. I was just playing around with it. That one is just oiled, is all that one is. And then here's one that, uh, that I did that I actually painted. It's a poi fish. It's actually for a planter. I just never got around to putting the planter together. So, so yeah, you can, you can paint them. You can, you can stain them, dye them. Gives you a whole lot of different options. getting close here the camera shows it's a little bit uh a little bit wetter than it actually is but i, I think we're doing all right we're gonna start tooling this side first What we do when we gonna start with beveling and you pick the pick the part of the design that you want farthest back and that's the one you start with so we're gonna start well, got a smaller beveler here and we're gonna start right here I know it's gonna be not much for you guys to see but You can see where I beveled that there. This is what gives it that, uh, that 3D look. It makes it really pop out. Yeah, this, this is where it gets kind of fun. It's kind of tedious up until now, but once you get to doing the actual tooling on it, that's when uh, it really gets fun to watch. start with these leaves around here first and get the leaves done because they're going to be the, the background basically and then we're going to move our way up um, we're going to move all the way up into the the flowers 
Yeah, just a second here. All right, just the wife checking in on me, making sure I'm still alive. Yeah, I definitely coach. Give you a little bit better of a view. <laughs> really starts to to give it that um, that realistic look.
Yeah. You know what? I spent a lot of hours uh, watching the new Yankee workshop with my dad. Um, who is that? Nor Norm Abram, I think is his name. That was uh, that hosted that show. My dad is a huge woodworker. He, uh, that's what his hobby is. And uh, he used to love watching the new Yankee workshop on there. Um, the other one that I like to watch was um, uh, Roy Underhill. He's got, um, oh goodness, I'm trying to remember what the name of, of his show was. The Woodwright Shop. The Woodwright Shop. I, yeah, that was the other one that I liked to watch growing up. I always thought it was cool how he did everything with, uh, you know, hand tools. No, uh, well, I guess he did have some power tools, but they were all human powered. None of them were were electric power. I always used to like watching that. So when I first started out doing this, I had a, a little tiny 12 inch by 12 inch square of granite that I had uh, I had bought from Tandy and uh, was doing it in our kitchen table in our apartment when we lived in Omaha. And uh, the guy that had taught me how to do it called me one day and said, hey, I've got a builder buddy who's doing some countertops in a house and he wants to know he's got some marble from the sink cut out that he wants to know if I know anybody that wants. And uh, so I went over there and took a look at it. I bought it. That's what this is. It's a piece of two inch marble that uh, I am set into this workbench. So that way I've got a, a good solid surface to work on. You almost have to have a, a piece of stone to do this on. Otherwise, the, the wood's soft enough, it just bounces. Instead of letting you put the nice, deep, dark grooves into it. boss is saying here. Now we're starting to pop there. Let's get these other leaves done over here. This is where having that weather, that, excuse me, that leather at the uh, right moisture level become so crucial. If it's too damp, it will, it'll take a, it'll take a, the tooling mark, but it'll be mushy. And then as it dries, you'll lose the, uh, you'll lose the impression of the, the tool.
get a little dry on that end. So you a little bit more pressure to get the, the imprint in. Yeah, the foot power lays and and uh, I think he's had, even had a, like a foot powered um, table saw, didn't he? thorn right there. Really stand up and pop here. There we go. Now we got a thorn on there. Just like the song goes, every rose has its thorn. Okay, so just beveling, beveling, beveling. All kind of part of the process. But in order to get this thing to look 3D, you have to. I definitely will, Roy. I'll send that over to you, bud, when I get done with it. So thanks for stopping by. It was good talking with you.
got that song stuck in my head. Thanks, Roy. We'll see you, buddy. Give me a little trouble around this hook right here. trick on these stems you extend past your cuts you go real light and then you, as you come towards your cuts you get heavier to bevel them in.
Okay, back out of here. Reddit's telling me here. What? 
layer beneath my kite. Sure, what that means. inexperience that Reddit is showing right now. I don't know what that means. Where a comment? Let's see. Never could you fire your boat. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. Fire your boat. You're tired. Let's see. I don't know what you're going to do. Right, I have no idea what that means. Special. All right. Anyway. Flare. Whatever that flare means. I don't know what flare means. Put a new one on me.
Not a real big fan of that one, but let's see if we can. There we go. We can fix that.
got the leaves all beveled. I'm going to start working on this rose and then follow with this rose. Always going from back to front. I think the bot said I'm watching my story. Huh? I think the YouTube bot said I'm watching my story. Yeah. You like it? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> if you don't, tough. It's going on your gun regardless. Right there. Put down. Sure. Or how the boys would. 